Welcome back to another UFC fight prediction video. In this video, I'll be predicting the prelim fights for UFC Fight Night on ESPN Plus, Andrade versus Zhang. So without further ado, let's get to our first fight on the card and our first prelim. So in our first fight, we have in the Bantamweight division, Batagiri Dana versus Haley Alating. So look at this fight. I'm going to be straight up. I'm not really looking into it. I don't really care too much about this fight. But just looking based off what little information you have on either of these guys is that Haley, I mean, Alan Tang has more experience by far. What he's like 13 and 7 or 12 and 7, some questionable up and down or almost 500 record and hasn't fought anybody. Whereas Batagari Dana at least looks like he's more consistent with his career, fresh into his career and showing at least ability to win more consistently. And I like ability of, uh, a fighter that has the ability to win, or at least especially at this level. You don't want a guy that's up and down and they're not even in the UFC or at a high level in May. Neither of these guys have fought at a high level in May. They're kind of getting brought in because of regional um, reasons. But in that is that like just feel like just looking at the record, Bad Gary Dana has shown more consistency and I like consistency, even though he's a young fighter. And being in that young fighter, being that fresh starter, has more room for improvement. Whereas Haley Alatang, with that experience, you kinda start to get lumped into an area where you kinda get stuck at. You're gonna be kinda be stuck in that whereas Bad Gary Dana still has more potential. But both guys have potential. This is MMA. People can have five hundred records and turn around and be a superstar. But um just looking off the generalized and I think Bad Gary Dana just his record and his resume just looks more impressive to me. I think it's going to be probably be a close decision fight. So in this fight, I got Bad Gary Dana via decision. Now on to our next fight. We have in the women's bantamweight division, Carolina Rosa Cavito versus Lara Fritzen Procopio. I'm not going to say that name no more. I'm going to call her Lara. So look at this fight. Lara, like, I think when she's undefeated or have, she at least has less losses, I would say. I don't know if she's undefeated per se. I'm not even going to look back into it. But just looking at from what I remember, looking at her record is that she really hasn't fought in anybody. I think she fought some like really low tier competition, and she's been looking winning, but decisions over against fighters that she's supposed to be finishing. Whereas Carolina Rosa Cavedo, when she fought fighters either around that same level or better, she's been finishing those same level of competition. And we look at her losses; all her level her losses are to a high level MMA fighter. So if you can say at least she's been in there with some of the you know UFC tier fighters or Evicta tier fighters, where is um Laura hasn't really fought anybody of that caliber. Now she's been like jousted into the UFC. I think it's a little bit too early for her and she needs to step back and kind of fight those invicta tier fighters or at least some high level or some names outside of the UFC before getting jumped in maybe a contender series something. But right now I think it's too big of a jump. And at least Carolina you know Carolina might not be a cream of the crop fighter right herself just yet. She at least has fought those cream of the crop fighters so she's got that rub and she's got that experience. And that's gonna be a big tell in this fight I think Rose Cavita just like this pretty much controls the fight and gives her, her I mean just shows her experience in fighting just the better fighter the more experienced fighter the more technical fighter and is, able, and is able to edge the fight whether it be by a large margin or medium margin I think it probably be a medium to large I'll say medium to close margin so in this fight I got Carolina Rose Cavedo via decision now to our next fight we have in the lightweight division Demir Ismagulov versus Tiago Moises so we got two fighters that have pretty solid grappling Moises Definitely wants to implement his grappling more than Ismag I mean, Ismagulov. I mean, I'm messing his name, but Ismagulov wants to because Moises wants to get to the ground. He wants to use his BJJ. But looking at this fight, I think Demir Ismagulov is the more complete fighter. He can strike as much cleaner. He's very good at range control. He might not be the most finishing fighter at this level, but he's very solid at his footwork, been in the right position, land those strikes, good jab, good range control. Whereas Tiago Moises, he does have some explosive attributes to him. He does have some solid technique. But I think. His Magalov is just much more technical. I think with his range control, his boxing, his mix up of striking, and, he, and the ability to control where the fight goes around with his Sambo background. I think that's going to be the really, it's his fight to lose in this fight. He has all the setup to dictate the fight. He has the boxing to dictate the range, and he has the grappling to, 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 like, to dictate where the fight goes to the ground. So, basically, with that being said, I think Tiago Mazes is a tough fighter, but I think that. Demir, in, in this fight, he's the more complete fighter, and he's the fighter that will, he'll have the remote in his hand. I think Moises is tough enough to make a decision. And also, Ismagulov isn't a fighter that really finishes fighters at this level just yet. So I think this fight goes to the decision with Demir Ismagulov controlling it roughly from far, like, roughly from start to finish. So in this fight, I got Demir Ismagulov via decision. Now to our next fight, we have in the light heavyweight division, Da Ung Jung versus Kedis Ibragimov. I mean, yeah, I'm messing. Ibragimov or whatever name is. But yeah, look at this fight. You got two pretty big boys that um I'm not they're not pretty but I'm saying they're big. Mind take the pretty out of there. They're two big boys. Six like six three Ibragimov versus six four Jung. So look at these guys six four Jung. But yeah, whatever case. Look at these two. Jung record kind of 
tricks you in a way you just don't look into who he's fought. When we look into who the fighters he's, he's fought, he hasn't really fought anybody yet. And you look at half, like really 80% of the people he's fought, even recently, he's been fighting guys like 0-2, 0-1. He's pretty much fighting just about anybody. It's not like he's been fighting 100 fights a year. He's been fighting like the average amount of fights that a fighter fights like about three fights a year. And his competition has been largely poor. Whereas Cadiz and Bragamoff has fought some better competition. I'm not saying they, neither of them have fought like a sessional competition. But it seems like Cadiz and Bragamoff has been fighting actually decent competition throughout. I'm not saying it's been the best competition, but at least he's been fighting respectable competition, especially for his level. Now, like, that might sound impressive with Dungu Jung, but that he's been getting some finishes, been doing this and doing that. He's big, blah, 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 this and that. But that's really all he is. He's big. He got some decent striking, a little bit of power. But Caddis and Bragamoff has a striking. He has grappling. He has sambo. He has the full package. I mean, he needs to work on it a little bit, but I see him as a more complete fighter, and I see him as a fighter that's trying to improve and trying to fight the competition, like fight the best competition where is Jung. Maybe he might be being avoided. Sometimes people say that, but other than that, I don't really see, not really seeing much out of him. So I think if Bragamoff is the better fighter, and I think he's a fighter that's been the more experienced fighter, even though I think Jung might have a little bit more fights. I just think, like I said, more complete, better fighter. And I think Caddis and Bragamoff just can beat him on the feet, mix in the grappling. I think he takes him down, ground and pounds him, and gets him out of there in the second round. So in this fight, I got Caddis and Bragamoff via, via, I mean, via second round TKO. I'm stuttering like a mug. Sorry about that. But on to our next fight. Now on to our fight. Not, our, our, Catch myself. Now to our next fight, we have in the bantamweight division, Sue Sue Madaraji versus Andre Sukumtov. So this fight can be a lot of fireworks right here. I don't think Sue Madaraji is really at his level of the UFC, but what he is is he's a fighter that's exciting. He's a fighter that's gonna go out there and fight, and he's not gonna be a slouch anywhere. He's not gonna be a slouch on the ground, even though he might not be the most technical on the ground or here or there. He's gonna give you a fight every every portion of the fight. He's not gonna lay there and just lay in full guard. He's gonna be scrapping there. He's not gonna be on a be on it, just throwing feints at each other, not trying to fight. He's going to go out there, he's going to be scrappy, and that's going to make a very tough fight for Andre Sukumtov. Andre Sukumtov is a very technical, very solid fighter, but he does have some tendency to have some questionable fight IQ, so this fight can definitely be a slip-up for him. But I just think that Andre Sukumtov, you know, he does make slip-ups. In a fight like this, it still kind of favors him in a way. It's always that chance you get caught or caught in something dumb. But other than that, I think Andre Sukumtov definitely is a much more technical fighter. Definitely this fighter has fought much higher level competition. Has beaten some decent level competition as well. He has a stri- I think the better striker, the better grappler, better everywhere in a significant amount. It's just it, would he get caught up in that you know firefight just because Sue Madaraji is bringing the fire? It's going to bring the fire out of Sukumtov and maybe let him make him forget his fight IQ, make him make him forget his technique. But other than that, I think Andre Sukumtov is able to be in a firefight and outside of the fire fight, he's, fight, he's able to keep his distance, land some hard shots, mix his up to the body, mix up to the head, get in the clinch if, to slow the fight down, land some elbows, maybe attack with some submissions. I think it's a exciting fight, but I think Andre Sukumtov's experience and his skills start to break down. Sumadaraji, pretty much after the first round, I think in the second round, starts to wear him down. Then in the third round, he gets him out of there via TKO. So in this fight, I have Andre Sukumtov via third round TKO. Now to our cold prelim headliner we have in the middleweight division, Anthony Hernandez versus June Young Park. So in this fight, you got a young prospect in Hernandez and a pretty young June Young Park. I think, was he 28 or something like that? Or maybe a little bit older, whatever the case. Two guys that are pretty fresh in UFC. Hernandez went on the contender series, got a fight in the UFC, lost. June Young Park just debuting in the UFC. So in this fight, I think Hernandez has a lot of potential in him. But what I see with him right now is that a lot of youthful bravado. Like the technique is there. He's proven on it. He has the power. He has that frame. He has a lot of good things going for him. But it definitely needs to improve his technique. But I really haven't seen all of it just yet. But from what I've seen, it certainly needs more improvements. And I think on other end, Jun Young Park is a kind of a slept on fighter just because he's from like an Asian circle. So people kind of sleep on him. But he might not be the most explosive or the most flashy fighter. But he has some good fundamentals. He has a jab. And I think Hernandez is going to be a problem for Hernandez, who's a fighter that likes to kind of come in press and be forward and try to, you know, just land those big shots and be in your face and be active. But kind of come in on a straight line. Don't really cut you off too well. And think with Jun Young Park's jab, I think that. And his slight his technicality, I mean his technical abilities, I think that's gonna favor him in his fighting. Hernandez coming in, gonna leave him walking into the jab. And Jun Young Park has some underrated power. Not it may not be like Rumble Johnson power, it might not be no anybody that has power, but it, you can't you don't respect his power or you try to come in too aggressive, he will hurt you. And I think Hernandez can fall into a lot of that stuff. I think it's gonna be a fight where like I said, I think Jun Young Park's gonna favor him over Hernandez's youth and bravado and et cetera, et cetera. I think that right now, the technique's going to be the biggest factor in this fight. I think Junior Park's going to keep him on the end of his jab for most of the fight, be countering him if he gets overzealous. I think Hernandez will have his moments here and there. 
but everything's gonna come back to technique. And Jun Young Park is a, a experienced fighter, whereas I think Hernandez needs more experience. And like that experience, even though the fight's gonna be a firefight, his experience will allow him to keep bringing the fight back to where he wants it. Whereas Hernandez, when the fight's not his way, he's just gonna pretty much fall more into Park's trap because he's gonna be trying to, or fall more into Park's games because he's gonna be trying to make something happen instead of setting it up. And that's really gonna allow t- um, Park's technique to shine in this fight. And it's gonna be a silent fight. It's gonna be a fight, you know, one of these textbook fights that you can see as technique versus youth. But um, yeah, I think Park breaks him down and wins a pretty um competitive fight. But the technique's gonna be favored over that youth. So in this fight, I got Jun Young Park via decision. Now to our prelim headliner we have in the welterweight division, Keenan Song versus Derek Krantz. So looking at this fight, you got um Keenan Song who at first was looking pretty good, and then in his last fight he really disappointed me. You got Derek Krantz, a veteran. Who came into his last fight against a you know jumping on short notice against a, a fight on a like a fire right now and uh, Vicente Luque was giving him some work and then got then you know Vicente Luque Luque regained his ground got his foot in and then put then put him away. But against this fight, it's going to be about what you, what have you done for me, lady? And that fight against Ke- and Keenan Song last fight he really disappointed me in a lot of way or maybe he just showed who he really is in a way in that fight. So he looked good when people were walking right into his punches. Yes, he has a good straight, but it was because those fighters were like. Not really truly striking like Bobby Nash. That's a wrestler. That a guy he fought was like a, probably like a wrestler or whatever. And neither of those guys were really striking. They had power in their hands. They could strike and they were in good shape and all that. But they not weren't strikers. So they would walk right into the straight. And when the moment he fought like a veteran guy who wasn't really a striker either. But just by moving angles, he wasn't really finding that straight. All the guy had to do was move. And even throw on sloppy strikes, he was able to catch him just because they weren't. He wasn't coming on a straight line all the time. Just a little bit of couple, just a couple of deception here and there was enough to throw him off. So I see with Darren Krantz, even though he might not be the most amazing fighter, I see a fighter that has a lot of experience outside the UFC and multiple organizations. He's a veteran. He's been around for the game for a long time. He might not have been in the spotlight, the spotlight but he's been around. I think he can do similar things to Keenan Song. I'm not saying he's going to do exactly the same thing, but I think the biggest factor in this fight is going to be experience. I think Keenan Song will improve from that last fight, but I think Darren Krantz can implement a game plan that's where he uses his experience against Keenan Song. With Keenan Song really being limited to like maybe really one tool on the feet, I think Derek Kranz can really exploit that. Like I said, with that wealth of experience, I think it'd be a competitive fight. Definitely could go either way. Keenan Song, power, and, and Kranz does kind of get aggressive sometimes to come straight in on the line, and that can help Keenan Song land it. But other than that, I think he's going to be prepared for that one move and be able to counter it and use that experience to mix it up and beat Keenan Song. And I think it's going to be a competitive fight. I think Keenan Song will be prepared for him mixing it up. I think Keenan Song is going to try to adapt and, and implement some new tools and different setups. But I think it's a little bit too soon for him to get a, to get this level of competition or get somebody this experience. I think he need to take, maybe take a fight to the side and not a fighter that's kind of with that much experience. But but in summation, you got a fighter with a lot of talent but limited tools versus an experienced fighter. And I think the experience is going to be the bigger factor in this fight. I got Krantz winning a close, tight decision over Song. So in this fight, I got Derek Krantz via decision. And that concludes my fight predictions for the prelims of UFC Fight Night on ESPN+. Plus. Andrade versus Zang. And as always, thanks for watching.